Our skies are full of mysteries. Unidentified flying objects secretly investigated by government agencies all over Europe for decades. There has been, and indeed still is, I think, great secrecy about UFOs and also a reluctance to, to talk about this subject. For the first time, we've collated sightings and reports from across an entire continent. What, what are the explanations behind these experiences, in your professional opinion, and are they real as uh, these individuals uh, claim they are? Welcome to Occult Investigations. My name is Jillian Post, and I am your host for tonight's episode, UFO Abductions. Humans have often looked intriguingly towards the sky in search of extraterrestrial intelligent life. According to a variety of accounts, it seems extraterrestrial intelligent life does in fact exist, within Earth's vicinity no less. Some people have been fortunate enough to glimpse UFOs, unidentified flying objects, which they believe were controlled by other life forms. Others have had more than mere glimpses. These individuals claim to have been abducted by extraterrestrial life, aliens. These scenarios are said to have often interrupted the individual during sleep. The person may find himself or herself in a state of paralysis. A light, a disturbance enters the scene. And the abductee is soon transported into what appears to be an alien spacecraft. What happens then involves a process of alien-conducted experimentation. Once the mission is complete, the victims find themselves back from whence they came. What follows may be loss of memory, nightmare, somatic, and disassociative symptoms, unusual markings on or within their bodies. The question many may want to know, are these accounts accurate? Or rather, are these recounted experiences far from reality? Perhaps extraterrestrial phenomena may not be the source of these events. If so, are these abductees intentionally deceiving the audience or is there something at work out of their control? Research has shown that varying sociological, psychological, and physiological phenomena may potentially be the real culprit. I recently had the privilege of interviewing a local abductee, Mr. Russell Nash. Hello, Mr. Nash. Hello. Could you describe your first abduction experience? Yeah, my, my first abduction experience happened back in the summer of 2011. It was July 14th, and I had just gotten off my, done my shift, and I was driving home on um, Route 14. It was about 7 p.m. at night, and I, I remember looking out the driver's side window and seeing these strange lights. Now, they were, they were kind of hovering, but they were moving back and forth in a regular pattern and you know I'd, I'd done some reading on you know spacecraft and and I'm, I'm common with air vehicles and it didn't sound like a helicopter or a jet or a plane there was no noise it was just this irregular patterns of green and red lights that seemed to be swirling around each other and so I, I pulled the car over I felt that they they felt me looking at them and the, the lights just they came stopped over me and I couldn't 
I couldn't see an aircraft at all. Uh, I saw the lights, they were looking right down on me. And there was this faint humming sound, but I could see no aircraft. It was, it was unbelievable. And then there was this high-pitched sound, and, and this, this green aura, this light poured down on me, and it, well, it felt like a giant hand scooped me up. They just lifted me up in the air, and they, they were lowering me back down. And then just like that, it was gone. It's like a flash. You know, I was alone. You know, on the road, it was dark, and you know, I, I felt very weak and shaky. And I, I managed to get myself up, walk back to my car, and I got in. And I remember looking at the at the time, and it was it's just past ten thirty. And you know, just like that, three hours had passed. It's it's like time skipped. I I, I lost time. I don't know how to describe it. Did they do anything to you? Was there any sign of physical contact? Cuts, scars, bruises? No. No, no nothing. I mean, I've, I've been taken since, and they usually, just, they usually just, just take me up. But, you know, there was no sign of any physical contact of any sort. What do you mean by they just take you up? Can you describe this? Yeah, I mean, ever since my first contact, it, the the they usually do the same pattern. I, I I go to bed. It happens after I've fallen asleep, and I'm suddenly awoken by these 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 lights, and I, I can't move. My whole body's frozen. I mean, I'm I'm aware that I'm awake, but I, I can't move. The first time it happened, I was I was paralyzed by fear. I was I was terrified. And next thing I know, I'm I'm floating above my bed. They just whisk me out, out of this world. And then you know, I always I remember waking up on what what seems to be an examination table, and there's this being standing over me, this intense stare, this intense gaze. And I remember the first time I was I was terrified. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And you know, this being looked down on me, and they. It said, you know, don't be afraid. We're not going to harm you. I don't know how it communicated because its mouth wasn't moving, but I thought it was its mouth. It, I don't know how to describe it. And I, I asked them, you know, what, what do you want with me? And they said, we, you've been chosen. And I, 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 chosen for what? And all it said was to help. And... What exactly do they do to you on this examination table? I don't know. I, I always wake up the next morning and back in my bed with, and they're gone without a trace. We invited onto our show for an interview Dr. Pete Vinkman, a specialist, who will better help us understand this phenomenon. So we're here with Dr. Pete Vinkman, a psychologist who specializes in UFO abductees and their experiences. Uh, thank you for being here with us. So you're familiar with Russell Nash's um, case and cases similar to his, are you not? I am. His case is an odd one, but uh, it's fairly typical on the spectrum of UFO experiences. He had an experience where he was, was lifted, he saw lights, but there was no sound. It happened at night and, and, and he was alone. It also happened repeatedly, and uh, he lost time. Uh, when he was lifted and taken from his home, he said he experienced something where he was on a table and was experimented on. All these things are typical of, of, of what a common UFO experience would be. Okay, um, now a question I have for you um, are, um, what, what are the ex explanations behind these experiences, in your professional opinion, and are they real as uh, these individuals uh, claim they are? Well, um, they certainly perceive it as real. Um, whether the explanations are extraterrestrial or not, almost certainly not. There are better non-extraterrestrial explanations for, for these experiences. Can you elaborate on that? What are those explanations that you refer to? Well, they could in, be broken down into three main categories. We have physiological, psychological, and sociocultural. Okay, um, 
first off, what are the physiological uh, factors that play a role in these experiences? Well, um, first we have sleep deprivation and other sleep sort of disorders. In Nash's case, he was sleeping at the time, so was this a dream or was it not a dream? Right away we have a, a doubt inter interjected in, in, into his story. And then uh, on top of, of whether or not he was sleeping, we have other sleep disorders that, that, that play a role. We also find that individuals are also prone to memory loss, uh, false memories, and false recognition of these memories. And recall. Yes, recall as well. Okay. Um, and uh, to continue on from what you've said, uh, what, what are the psychological aspects that um, influence these experiences? We, we generally see uh, individuals have a sort of pattern or, or sort of typical sim sim symptoms. Not necessarily uh, totally clinical, but often in subclinical levels. These symptoms will be uh, depression, um, disassociation, and ADHD. Again, not always in clinical levels, but, it is, but they will have a tendency to those, those three things. We also see something called uh, schizotypy, which is something where you are, have a genetic pre predisposition to, to see things under a certain stress. So if you exceed a certain stress level, you will, you will start to have uh, schizoid things. So you will start to see, uh, you start to be paranoid, you have a tendency to see things. So those would play a role greatly in, in things like you know, seeing UFOs. Going along with that, these individuals tend to be more fantasy prone, and um, we'll see, we'll, we'll be just more, more susceptible to suggestion. Okay, um, and lastly, uh, you also referred to sociocultural influences. If you could elaborate on those aspects as well. Well, social, just culture plays a huge role. Things like the media plays a huge role of how. Uh, one interprets the world around them. So when the memory, when when one encodes the memory onto someone's, uh, uh, when, when one is encoding the memory onto someone's brain, your personal experiences, which is affected by the media and culture, affects that encoding. So it, it, it helps you, or, or it helps, or, or possibly deters you in, in how you interpret whatever piece of information that is. So, for instance, you have a flashing lights in the distance oh, it's a cell tower, or it's a plane. Well, it had you had been watching, you know, or reading books on UFOs, maybe that all of a sudden that becomes a UFO. On top of it, as time passes, the brevity of whatever memory that you have gets degraded. That happens with everyone all the time. That just happens. But on top of that, you have then the loss of information. The primary encoding, which is affected by culture, but then when you go to remember that again, the culture is affected it again in in terms of your personality. So you have a, a dual effect of culture in that. Okay. Well, we really appreciate your insight and your expertise, and thank you for being here with us today. Oh, it was it was great being here. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you found this program insightful, enjoyable, and informative.